This video is sponsored and approved by Omaze. What's up guys? It's Chad with Living the Van Life. Up here in Washington. Just got back not too long ago from my trip up to the Arctic. Preparing for a trip to head down into Mexico. But in between now and then, I figured it'd be good to get myself up into the North Cascades of Washington State. I've been working on a project that I've had in my head for the last several months for another YouTube channel that's going to bring you guys some more of the cinematic experiences that I get to enjoy through my living the van life travels. So I'm headed up towards Mount Baker. I brought some food, I brought some firewood, I'm gonna get up here into the mountains, just kick back and live some van life, see if we can't capture some cool scenes as the sun goes down here this evening. Stoked to have you guys on board. Welcome to the adventure. The Alpenglow is the most fantastic time of the day in the evening up here in the mountains during the winter time. Perfectly blue sunny sky. Mount Shuxon, magnificent view off to the east, the sun setting to the west behind me. 
and the sunset is casting this amazing pink and purple glow which reflects down onto the snow and creates what's known as alpenglow. What an amazing time of day out here. Absolutely fantastic. We're gonna see if we can capture this in a time lapse. We're gonna have some time to kill, We're gonna cook some food up here and see what we get. So I apologize for the uh, dim light right now. It's getting dark, which is what we want for our time lapse. But I wanted to give you guys a brief overview of my time lapse slider setup that I have here. This is what I've been using for the last six months or so in all of my videos. Essentially, this is a uh, 48 inch slider. It's mounted atop two tripods. Now this slider is motorized, it's all fully programmable. Over here we've got the shuttle and on top of it is the Rhino Arc 2. This is a motorized camera head. Essentially what I do for time lapses through the night is I do about a, typically a 30 second shutter opening at F4 aperture and about 1600 ISO to 3200 ISO. The camera will mount up here on top of the ARC-2 and all these wires plug into the camera and everything is made to sync together. Then essentially what I do is I program the time-lapse slider to take a picture. The camera is open for 30 seconds. Once the shutter is closed, then the motorized slider moves just a fraction of an inch. Then it opens up the shutter again, another 30 second shutter, and then that process repeats over the course of the 48 inches of slider. For this type of time-lapse photography, these are all captured with actual still photographs. Now, normally it will take about four hours for the uh, time-lapse to fully finish. And after that, that will give us about a 20 second playback when the time-lapse is all finished. From here, I'm gonna go ahead and move this setup into position. I'm gonna get the camera all set up and plugged in, and then I'm gonna start this and let that four hour process begin. And uh, so far, everything's looking good to capture a nice, uh, beautiful time-lapse here this evening. Okay guys, the time-lapse has officially started. It's about uh, 10 after seven. It's uh, definitely dark but there is a, a little sliver of moon out. So there's actually a significant amount of light that shines down across the uh, fields of snow and the stars are out in force. So it's actually uh, beautiful. Uh, I did uh, bring up the jet boil and I also brought a, a freeze dried backpacking meal. So I'll probably melt some snow here, uh, boil some water and go ahead and fix myself a bit of a meal while I'm up here waiting. So I've got some time to kill up here. It is uh, extremely cold right now, actually. So I'd imagine I'll be doing some running in place to uh, stay warm. All right, guys. Well, truth be told, I lasted uh, about an hour up there on the hill and started realizing that temperatures, I'm guessing we're probably getting pretty close to uh, single digits in the Fahrenheit. And I was just standing around waiting in the dark the fact that I was uh, a couple miles away from the van and being so far out and having so much gear, it wouldn't be a good idea to wait to the last minute when I was too cold. Chose the safer route and decided to hike myself back down here to the comforts of the van where the heater's on, I can get a good night's sleep. However, I did leave the camera up on the hill to go ahead and complete its five hour uh, time lapse. So the camera is up there working away right now and I just decided that I would hike back up in the morning. I'm gonna go ahead and crawl into bed and get a good night's sleep. We'll catch you in the morning. Good morning guys. I'm just waking up here this morning and getting myself sorted and ready to hike back up the mountain to go fetch the camera from last night's time lapse. And as I was doing that I was thinking back to the adventure up to the Arctic and all the adventures I've had here inside the Sprinter van and just what a, a great habitat 
that it has become in getting me out on all of these adventures. And that actually brings me to the sponsor of today's video, which is Omaze. Now Omaze has been a longtime supporter of the Live in the Van Life YouTube channel. If you guys aren't familiar with Omaze, they actually raise funds for charities by giving away life-changing experiences. Now I've always enjoyed working with Omaze here on the channel because I feel like they give experiences away that you guys as the viewers can actually really relate to. Now for this go around, Omaze is giving away a brand new 2022 Mercedes Sprinter van. Now also included in this deal is Vansmith is going to do $80,000 worth of conversion to the interior. I mean, we're talking they're going to build out a kitchen galley. They're going to put the Max Air air fans, the same fans that I've got, a full-size bed, solar panels up top, a refrigerator, a fresh water system. Also, the winner is going to get a choice of exterior upgrades, including a rear bike rack, storage box, upgraded suspension, all-terrain tires, and more. I mean, they are going to deck this thing out. Guys, think about this. This is your opportunity to get into a Sprinter van and go out and live your own van life adventure. I don't know about you guys, but I was pretty stoked when they came up with this idea and the fact that I can talk about it here on the channel and give you guys all the opportunity. So for your chance to win this 2022 Mercedes Sprinter van with an $80,000 eco-friendly conversion, head on over to omaze.com forward slash LTVL. And the cool thing is donations go to support the amazing work of the Micro Works Foundation. With that being said, guys, it's time for me to jump out of the van, hike myself back up to the mountain and grab this camera because I'm pretty excited to see what this time lapse brought to the table for us. All right, guys, I'm out of here. All right, it's the next morning. Now we begin the trek up the mountain to go fetch the camera, see what we got for a time lapse through the night. Got a bit of a climb, but the nice thing is we're going up empty this time. Hell yeah. Well, the good news is the camera is still here and it looks like it did complete its move across the slider, which means that the batteries survived through the cold. Here it is. Mission accomplished though. Now let's see how the shots look. I think we done good. 
It's such a mission to come up here and uh, attempt these time lapses. All this work, all those hours of the camera capturing, and it ends up on screen for anywhere from 10 to 20 seconds. But I feel like the time lapses are perhaps some of the most rewarding shots that you can get. Here we are, top of the mountain with a wonderful view of Mount Shuxon. Feels good. All right, I'm gonna start the process of breaking this down because the work is only halfway done at this point. We still have to get all this gear down. All right, got gear all packed up. So far on the camera, the shots look fairly decent. I would say that is a mission accomplished for sure. All right, at this point, I'm gonna start making the trek down before I get too cold. We'll see you guys back down at the bottom. That's always super cool up here at Mount Baker. The gray jays, otherwise known as mountain jays, they love to uh, come and eat right out of your hand. It's pretty cool. They're pretty tame, pretty brave. So anytime I'm up here, it's always fun to share a moment with those guys. All right, got down off the mountain. Everything's packed up put away it's time to start making my way down the hill uh, I thought probably what I'd do is maybe head off to a nice spot along the river and uh, set up a campfire and cook a meal real quick and uh, enjoy some late lunch after uh, a couple days of good hiking so gonna hit the road we'll see you guys down at the bottom
can we take just a minute and talk about these brand new living the van life hoodies i've got to say this here is by far my most favorite hoodie that we've had available on the website yet uh, this is what we're calling the overland logo super cool design this sweatshirt is nice and heavy duty it's durable it's really really warm but the most important thing is that it's like super comfortable you know those nice fuzzy hoodies that when you put them on they just feel like your most favorite pajamas that's what this hoodie feels like this overland logo is actually also available in t-shirts as well which is cool the other thing that i'm actually really excited about is the same hat that you guys have seen me wearing on the channel for a couple years now which is actually my most favorite hat uh you guys are always asking when can we get live in the van life hats available right here guys the hats are done the hats are available on the website so what you guys need to do is get on over to livingthevanlife.com get one of these hoodies while they're available super comfortable like i said it's been my favorite so far keeping me nice and cozy out here on the river as we get ready to cook a delicious meal over this campfire Actually got a new knife that I've added to the cooking collection. Now you guys have seen me use a knife very similar to this, which was actually the Amazon kitchen knife. Uh, and I like the style of knife, but I actually just really wasn't happy with the quality. Uh, so I found this one on Amazon and ordered it up. It was a fraction of the cost, and this knife is far superior. And this has quickly become my new favorite knife. I mean, just look how thick that blade is there on the back side it's just a nice heavy duty knife and the sharpness far superior over the other knife I do get a lot of questions on this style of knife that I use here in the video, so if you guys are interested, I will post a link in the description below this video.
that is thickened up nicely. Essentially what we have done is made a very simple chili. At this point I'm going to go ahead and pull this out of the Dutch oven because then we're going to add some other ingredients and this back on top of it. Alright guys, now is the moment of truth to see how we did here with our Dutch oven meal. Ooh, look at that. That looks fantastic. Alright guys, let's dig into this and see what this is all about. I feel like a good Dutch oven meal is just like a time lapse. You never know what you're going to get until you dig in to see the results. Look at this. Look at that crunch on the bottom. Fantastic. Look at that. We'll go ahead and top that off with a few more fresh Fritos. Now, how'd we do? Oh man, how delicious. Essentially what we have here is a live in the van life Frito pie casserole made in a Dutch oven over a campfire right here along the Nooksack River here in the beautiful Pacific Northwest. Now Frito Pie is a huge, huge deal down in New Mexico and Texas. Matter of fact, growing up down in New Mexico as a kid, we grew up on this stuff. And it was always a favorite when mom set it down on the table in front of us. And here out in the wilderness, with a few simple ingredients, we're able to cook it over a campfire in a Dutch oven. Wow. That's freaking so good. Hmm. Now, of course, in traditional van life style, I opted to 
put some Italian sausage in rather than the typical ground beef that you would normally put in a Frito pie or a chili. But I must say, substituting the Italian sausage over the top, over the top. You just can't go wrong with it. Cheers, guys. Oh, man. Seriously, it's so freaking delicious. Now, anytime you're cooking with a Dutch oven over a campfire, one of the biggest challenges is it's really easy to get the bottom of your dish too crispy, mainly because it's really hard to control the temperature of the fire that you're cooking with. Whereas back home on a stove, of course, you got that nifty little dial. Here, you've got fire that is continually dying, and then you also can raise your chain up and down. But I will say in this instance, where we had those Fritos down there and that cheese melting all around, look at that crust right there. That right there is pure deliciousness. The perfect amount of crunch for this meal. Mm. Mm -hmm. I gotta say guys, this might go down as one of the most favorite campfire Dutch oven meals in living the van life. I have a few at the top of the list, but This one's going to be right there with the best of them. And then to wash it down with a little bit of crack and rum and Diet Coke. I'm sure you guys are probably as curious as I am as to how the time lapse from last night turned out. Like I said, going up and shooting these time lapses is a huge, huge commitment. Oftentimes it's one little thing that makes the whole thing a failure. But as with anything in life, you gotta take those chances. You gotta put yourself out there. Sometimes you win, sometimes you fail. But nonetheless, there's a lesson to learn from every time you take and put yourself out there. I'd say let's go ahead and roll that footage. Let's see how this time lapse turned out. Well, there we've got it. That's all 480 individual still images captured with 30 second shutter openings, running about four hours and 49 minutes. The crazy thing is, the temps had to have been in the single digits in Fahrenheit, which was very, very cold. And that is extremely strenuous on camera equipment and especially batteries. So I'm gonna go ahead and chalk that up as a success. It's been cool to get out here and shoot more of these time lapses. I'm actually working on a little bit of a project that's been in the works for a couple months and I'm working on collecting all of my time lapses and all of my aerial images and putting them together into a collection that I'll be able to share with you guys here in the near future. So stay tuned for that. I'm pretty excited about it because after all, getting out here and capturing these images, filming 
these landscapes. This is all what got me into van life in the first place. It all happened because I wanted to be behind a camera. And it's been important to me to keep that first and foremost. So as you guys have seen over the years with living the van life, things have changed, things have shifted. But the main thing that's important to me is I'm here to bring you guys along on the journey and the things that I find as my life changes and it ebbs and it flows. And to be quite honest with you, I understand that I probably failed completely on winter camping this year. With spending 38 weeks last year building the Sprinter van, by the time fall time came around, I was ready to get out. I was ready to get down into the desert and just spend some time out where I love to be, which is the desert. And really what that did is that put me too far into the winter season. And I came back up to the Pacific Northwest to film some winter camping videos. At that point I had, gosh, probably a good couple months worth of episodes that I needed to edit. And by the time I was done editing at the beginning of 2022, well, winter time here in the Pacific Northwest all but picked up and left. We had weeks on end of spring-like weather and no precipitation, so it just wasn't perfect for any sort of winter camping. But you know what? That's honestly what persuaded me to take the leap of faith and decide to drive up to the Arctic, which my trip up to the Arctic probably goes down of one of the most epic, one of the most craziest, and one of the most extreme adventures that I've ever taken. So for that, I'm extremely grateful for, and I hope that you guys enjoyed the videos from that adventure as much as I enjoyed the adventure myself. But from here, I'd say this wraps up this here living the van life adventure. If you guys have made it this far and you're not already part of the channel, make sure and hit the subscribe button. Make sure and hit the like button. Most importantly, leave your comment in the feedback section down below the video. And also, don't forget to go over, get yourself a hoodie. This thing's been keeping me nice and warm and cozy out here on the river on this late winter evening. All right, guys, I'm out of here. Peace out. Keep on trucking. I also want to thank Omaze for sponsoring today's video. And don't forget, for a chance to win that 2020 4x4 Sprinter van, head on over to omaze.com forward slash LTVL.